Today we're here in the city of Portland, in the far northwestern state of Oregon in the United States. Every year Portland hosts what is called the Better Living Show. Now you might be wondering, what's the relevant to us here in Fiji? Well, it's simple. Every year this event showcases some of the leading technologies and innovations when it comes to the issue of sustainability. Over the next half an hour, we will show you and speak to some of the key people on that front. As the largest sustainable lifestyle exhibition in the American Northwest Coast, the Portland Better Living Show attracts a wide range of people in the green business. From cutting edge solar technology, green wheels, to sustainable outdoor living. If it's green and beautiful, it's here at the Portland Better Living Show. For a country hooked on transportation, the green sustainable industry is now a billion dollar business. So what you're looking at here, this is our fourth generation prototype. It's a fully electric vehicle designed to be just your everyday vehicle for all the things that you do to and from work or school, with a few errands and things like that. And that's how most people use their vehicles. So we tried to design something that's a real better tool for the job. It's got zero emissions because it's a 100% electric drivetrain and it's just a lot of fun to drive. Uh, it goes highway speeds and you can charge it at home or at a public charging station. And um, yeah, we've been getting a really positive response and we're currently building our fifth prototype right now. That's going to be really our product prototype and it'll be done about a month. Even the big names in the motor industry are also catching on to this trend. Close Up took a ride on this Ford Fusion Hybrid. It's, a, it's got a really complicated system, or it could be simple for it, but it's a, basically a computer system that uh, determines when um, a number of different parameters that it's always measuring. It says, okay, well, you need to go this fast and this much amount of time. Basically, your, your gas pedal determines where everything is. When you're right at the top of the gas pedal, just barely on it, you're going to be in electric vehicle mode until you exceed 41 miles per hour. And then when you, when you need to accelerate onto the freeway or something, it's going to go to, if you really put your foot all the way into it, it's going to combine the gas motor and the electric motor to reach 196 miles per, or uh, 196 horsepower, which is plenty to merge onto the freeway and pass people and do whatever you need to do. Even classics are getting a green renewable overhaul. Partnerships like Portland Green Electric and Nissan is also leaving an impression. Probably what stands out for me the most is the pickup. Uh, a lot of people think they'll have to sacrifice when they get an electric vehicle. They get in this car, they can't believe they get up and go. And Nissan's known for making some quick cars. And this is actually one of their fastest cars, zero to 30 miles an hour. This car from the stoplight, uh, it's just got a lot of zip. So I think that's what, what really seals the deal. People come in and they want to like the car because they know that it's the right thing environmentally. Certainly it's economic. So whether it's converting recycled milk jugs into furniture or just using art, to spread the message. This graphic has a way of, um, and the issue of sustainability has a way of, of, of uh, connecting all generations because these are issues that we all have in common uh, from very young to very old. And so this is an opportunity and of sustainability is an opportunity to work together. And uh, the graphic work that I do is just a way of connecting, getting people connected and having these meaningful conversations. Visual stimulation this way helps people absorb the message much more easier. So if you can connect with people through pictures, it, it, it has a way of unlocking or opening a door to uh, a, a deeper conversation. Um, it has a way of, if we're having a conversation here, it has a way of taking our ideas and putting it in a central place so that we can both look at it kind of without a lot of judgment, but just looking at, okay, here's what, here's what you're thinking, here's what I'm thinking, and kind of how do those two or three things connect? And it's all about sustainability about our economy, about education, and about our neighborhoods. And a show like this connects thinking, 25-year thinking, with something you actually can do next week uh, because there's real approaches to how you build your home, how you conserve energy, what you do with your food, all those things that you can even do now uh, that are part of getting to where we want to get to in 25 years. Here, yeah, we were also shown how better living can start right from the building process. If you take a home that was built in 1905 that has no insulation in it and you just put insulation in thinking that saved you a bunch of money, it may actually create problems in the wall assemblies and how that house exhausts moisture that causes it to rot. Uh, uh, and I think your climate in Fiji has a lot of those issues that if the home isn't, isn't built for those conditions, 
uh, you actually can do harm to it. We were looking at an event that would take a traditional show, like a home and garden show, but bring the message of the environment, climate change, and those actions into the show, providing products and resources for just the general public, for the mainstream. Not necessarily the people who already got it, but for the people that were had a little bit of a green bent or were at least conscious about it, but wanted to go farther. When you visit an event like this, it helps to keep an open mind. It's been very positive. I think what people get surprised at when they come here is they might come with a preconceived idea. Well, I came to find the cars or whatever it is, but then they see the fashion or they see the other things. And what they learn is within their life, there's a lot of things you can do to help, not just yourself to be healthier, but the plant to be healthier. And you can do it and be comfortable at the same time. Going green and adopting sustainable practices, however, requires quite a bit of thought. Jumping straight into it is not always advisable. Well, I think that people inherently understand that uh, tapping into renewable energy resources is the right direction to go. The challenge is, you know, how do you do it? Is it possible to do it for my home or business? And frankly, is it affordable? Can I make that investment happen? So what we try to do is understand what the barriers are for people to invest in renewable energy solutions or efficiency for that matter, and then kind of create bridges over each one of those barriers. So whether it's putting in place uh, educational programs to help build awareness and, and understanding of the technology or helping them evaluate their home for any renewable energy or efficiency potential they have, connecting them with somebody who can get the job done. I mean, that can be overwhelming in and of itself. And then, of course, packaging that with great cash incentives and also helping them understand other tax credits or funds that might be available so they can actually invest in the project today and reap those long-term savings. Here at major exhibitions, like the Portland Better Living Show, for this landscape architect, this green approach is much, much more than just about visual appearances. This is, in fact, an edible landscape. Probably the easiest thing to grow uh, in your own yard is salads because they have a short life, they don't need a lot of root space, uh, you can grow them just in a container. Uh, and of course cooking herbs, uh, you know everybody's got their special herbs and you can put them together for instance over here in this collection of herbs uh, we took a turf block and put some a variety of different herbs in there and then everybody can mix and match what they like. like for instance we have curry, which I know is very popular in some cultures, and then this is a mint, and then we have some different types of thyme. So it's a lemon thyme, a lime thyme, and then this is actually another type of mint, variegated mint. There. So you know, if you've got fresh herbs to cook with, you're going to be more inclined to cook, and more time spent cooking, less time eating packaged foods, you're going to be healthier. Right. And it's a good thing to get your kids involved with, too. Do you see a lot of people doing this already here in Portland? Or? Yes, more and more. Uh, the other thing people are doing a lot of is chickens. So uh, chickens are good for the garden. Uh, they do a little fertilizing. They clean up some of the insects. And so and then, of course, you can get eggs. And eventually, if you're vegetarian, you, know, you can eat the chicken. So you know, it all works. And that's the show for this week. Now, while some of the technology and innovation you've just seen here might not be available yet in Fiji, it does make us realize what we could be missing out on. Until next week, good evening.